why do we need data testing in the first place? I'm sure I don't have to give you a background of why data is important. Every one of us know that data is one of the most important asset of any enterprise. Maintaining data quality is the key to ensure success in this information age where there, there is terabytes and petabytes of data created every second right across the internet and even on enterprise level. According to Gartner's study, there are businesses which are losing close to 8 million every year due to bad data, right? Now, this number could be much higher for larger enterprises where data issues are more prevalent and critical. For example, the telecommunications sector or the insurance sector, the banking sector and the retail sector as well, right? So the data testing is a critical aspect and most of the organizations are spending a lot of effort and money to reduce it as much as possible and reduce the overall overhead of the dollar value loss due to this data inconsistency or poor data quality. Now, why do we need ETL testing specifically? ETL is commonly associated with any of the data warehousing projects. But in reality, any form of data movement from a source to a target can be considered as ETL. Large enterprises quite often have a need to move application data from one source to another or one application to another for data integration or data migration purposes. ETL testing is a data centric testing process to validate that the data has been transformed and loaded into the target system or the MDM systems as expected. Right, so that's the reason we need the ETL testing. Now within the enterprise between two different applications, if there is inconsistency in the way the data is being read, we have already lost it, right? You're already getting into that 8 million number of loss by having the bad data consistency, right? So what are the different challenges in ETL testing? Now ETL testing is different from application testing. Why? Because it requires a data centric testing approach. That's what we have covered in the further chapters. What are the different phases which should be considered during implementation and what are the different phases which should be considered during ETL testing. Now, some of the challenges in ETL testing are that the ETL testing involves comparing a large volume of data, which can go up to millions of records. Right now it is millions of records is pretty common, especially in telecom and insurance and banking industries. Now the data that needs to be tested is in heterogeneous data forms, right? Like your flat files, relational databases, your open API feeds for Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, your XML web services, your applications like SAP, Tibco, PeopleSoft, n number of sources, right? That's a challenge again, because you need to connect to all of those heterogeneous sources, bring them all to the same standard level of data, which the business wants to look at it for generating the reports, right? Now data is often transformed, which might require a complex ETL code or sometimes the SQL queries for comparing the data during the testing phase, right? And ETL testing is pretty much dependent on the availability of test data with different test scenarios. Now, with all these cross-border restrictions and dummy data creation and the scenarios with which we need to have, it is almost difficult to create test data with all the business scenarios and test them before it lands into production. Now, if there is real data in production that cannot be shared to a project member who is in offshore or who's out of the country, right? So that challenge is also there, right? Those are some of the challenges which we have to face during the ETL testing, right? We have in detailed explanation of multiple things which we'll learn in this course. So as we go further, we'll learn different aspects of this and how do we tackle them, all right? This is one of the common questions which is asked by most of the non-Java big data IT professionals about their current technologies and the future of it.
I mean, this does not only impact the ETL technologies as such, but any other technologies apart from Java, right? Now, especially when it comes to the ETL or the data warehouse world, the future would be better than ever since big data would help increase the requirements for better processing of data and the existing tools are already coming up with the options to incorporate the big data features within them, right? Now, especially tools like Informatica are more evolved in terms of designing ETL, creating workflows or addressing the complex business validations or rules, right? Now, if you see big data tools like Pig or Hive, they're more like programming scripts, right? Over time, these tools would also get a UI or a graphical user interface like Informatica or any other tool. but that is still a bit far away. So at this point, the ETL tools are better for designing and coding ETL, right? And if you look at it, the current tools are so embedded into the system in majority of the corporate implementations, right? And it is not easy for them to convert that from existing tools to a new one, right? Because they have to set up a parallel environment. They have to come up with a different budget for it. And that's not a, easy one to do right the other aspect of this debate is that big data tools are for big data and etl tools are more efficient on traditional data warehousing it means that big data can be used for this machine learning the uh, sensor activity the systems where it will generate multiple bytes of data unlike a traditional data warehouse where you get files on a batch mode or on a real-time method, right? Now, of course, technically speaking, you can use both either big data tools or the ETL tools which are currently available in both situations. But for example, if you try to use Informatica on top of Hadoop, it would slow down the entire process as Informatica is sitting on another box, but not on the HDFS file system or the Hadoop distribution file system, right? And if you try to use big data tools for traditional ETL, then you'd need to do a lot of manual stuff. Need to have programmers who can code each ETL task, which is easily done using an interface into a programming language or a line. And every time you need to do the regression testing where there is a new version of big data tools, right? So there is no such thing as backward compatibility within this open source tools. Now, what is backward compatibility? Backward compatibility is something that it will match to the previous versions. For example, if you have a code in Informatica 7, and if you enable the backward compatibility in Informatica 10, it will consider the Informatica 7's code also as Informatica 10. Now that feature is lacking in the big data programming tools. Maybe that is in, in the phase of being implemented and that will come up in the future, but right now it is not there, right? Now, to the extent I see it and to the extent I've spoken to multiple people and the conferences which I've attended on big data, in the coming five to 10 years, there will be a lot of changes to what we know as big data now and what we know as ETL tools now and all the ETL tools will incorporate all the features wherever possible of big data and use the HDFS structure, right? So to the existing system as is, to the existing setup, which is there from quite some years, that'll stay as is for at least the coming five years. And all these tools would remain there and open source tools would ultimately be merged with the commercial counterparts leveraging all the options of the open source. And you would also see the same story getting repeated again and again in the BI space. Now it's big data, right? Let's say after five years or 10 years, there is some other technology which would make the big data as small, or it would have better features than what big data can give us now, right? So all of these tools, I mean, commercially, if you look at it, if these tools have to survive, they have to incorporate all the features possible and they're already doing it, right? They're already releasing their BDEs, which is big data additions, right? Leveraging all possible options or features which big data can leverage within their tools. 
Now I as a company, if I have to think about paying the additional license fee to the existing tool or think about setting up a whole different team, whole different technology stack separately and run it parallelly for the next six months and then analyze if the business says, okay, go, go on to it, then I'll have to think about the cost specific things, isn't it? And post that, what is the support? For example, if I take Informatica license now, the corporate license, I get the assurance from Informatica team that, okay, any issues, our IT team is there for 24 bar seven, and we will help you. If required, we'll come to your site, sit with you, fix the issue, and get the system going. Now for these open source tools, that is difficult. Right, all you have to leverage is the forums available and the developers can come in. So it's, I'm not saying there is no help, there is help, but it is not as committed as these commercial applications or commercial tools are giving to you or giving to the business. So whatever is the case and whatever is the technology, we need testing to be done, right? If you specifically talk about ETL testing's future, Either it is big data, either it is Informatica, data stage, job initio, talent, pentaho, whatever ETL tool it is, testing is required. Even if they leverage the big data additions or not, it still requires testing. So we need testing to be done for the different ways of data extraction, the transformation, the reporting, the analytics. So I don't see any issues with this field or with the future of ETL testing, at least for the next 10 years, until unless there is some revolutionary tool which does the testing automatically all by itself without any manual intervention, right? So let's get started in learning the different things which you need to know or which you need to get started as ETL testing professional. We'll learn about the basics of the data warehouse concepts which is one of the mandates for you to start with ETL testing. Testing in its own is a separate world because you have multiple varieties or types of testing which you can perform on a particular IT system or an application. But when it comes specifically to ETL testing, you need to know the data warehouse concepts. You need to understand the basics of why ETL is required and what is the purpose behind it. and and once you know the purpose, you'll have a clear understanding of what is the scope within which you have to create your own test cases, do the positive testing, the negative testing, and what kind of data testing which you have to do. Right? So let's jump into the concepts and we'll try to understand the basic questions of what, why, who, and then we start with the basic definitions. Now the first one, what is data? Now data is a collection of raw material in unorganized format which refers an object that means it can be anything you just open a notepad scribble something on it that is data right it is unorganized you receive a word document from somebody and that is your data you receive an email you receive a text message onto your mobile everything is data right now based on the format in which you're receiving we can categorize it either into a organized format or a unorganized format right so what is data in the first place it is description of things events activities or any transactions or any system learning like switch on switch off anything which is recorded which defines a particular event or a particular place or a particular activity or a transaction that is data then what is information now information is nothing but the data which you've received is organized in a meaningful way which has value that is information so data is the raw format information is the organized data with which we can make out the meaning and the value of it right now when you have data and information you would get into the knowledge which is nothing but your processed data or information that conveys understanding or learning applicable to a problem or an activity once you have the data or the information which is organized you can process that data in the specific manner using etl tools to get knowledge to get insights out of the data to see 
if that can be more than serving the purpose right now with the data in hand it is serving the purpose but you have to see if it is meeting the criteria with which the organization or the firm is getting benefited out of it right so we can talk more about data but we we'll leave it there for now because that's definition and i'm sure you're all aware of what data is in this particular situation right